Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Discriminating Gamer Say. Did you hear that a city went missing in the north of England? The police are looking for leads. Ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to go ahead and take a preview look at Shake That City from AEG. In Shake That City from AEG, one of four players are going to attempt to create the greatest city of them all and collect the most victory points. Now, at the beginning of the game, each player is going to take their own player board. Now, this board has two sides. Everybody has to be on the exact same side in order to play the game. Along two sides of the board, the first player is going to go ahead and place the bonus tiles, but along the north side and the west side, they're going to randomly place uh, these three on the top, three on the bottom. You're going to flip those over. Then the other players are going to go ahead and they're going to place their bonus tiles to match that first player, uh, his own placement. You're going to place the city tiles next to you, as well as the score kind of reference card, and you're also going to put the round tracker next to you as well. Now you have a shaker that you're going to construct, and there's a video online, you can see this, where it will tell you how to construct it. Um, it's actually not very difficult, but you put together this shaker. Now what you're going to do is you have a number of different colored cubes. You place all of these cubes in the top of the shaker, and you, of course you kind of shake it around on the, on the table. Now what you're going to do is on your turn, the very first thing you do is you go ahead, you shake that up, then you push in the side, just smooth it out a little bit more, and then you pull it up, and you will have a grid of three by three cubes. Now these cubes, of course, are going to be in different colors. Now the first player, the one that actually uh, put them out there, he is going to go ahead and pick a color. He can pick whatever color he can see represented there in the grid, and then he can take that many city tiles of that color, and then he can place them on his board. Now when he places them on his board, he has to do it in the exact same configuration as uh, it's laid out on the on the uh, in the grid and the cubes, you cannot manipulate it. You cannot twist it or turn it. It has to be in that exact exact same configuration. Looking at it from your point of view, it has to be in that ex uh, exact configuration for everybody. But here's the thing: where the first player gets to choose whatever color he wants, the other players can only choose colors the first player did not choose. Now, after everybody is placed their uh, city tiles. You're going to go ahead put those cubes back in the top of the shaker. You're going to shake it up. You're going to move it to the next player. You're also going to advance the player track round and a new round begins. Now the different colors of city tiles represent different parts of a city. A gray is roads. The green are parks. The red are houses. The black is factories and the blue is shops. Now, the game lasts a total of 15 rounds, and on rounds 13, 14, and 15, things change a little bit. In these last three rounds, players can pick any color, regardless of player order. They don't have to, uh, they're not limited to what they can pick after the first player picks his color. They can pick whatever they want. Now, depending on whether you're playing with the landlocked side of the board or the beachfront side of the board, scoring is going to change a little bit. But critically, how you place your tiles is going to determine how you score them. Now, first of all, you've got the scoring bonus tiles. Now, they have different sides to them. One side has, if you essentially fill up a row, you get to flip that over for the bonus points. Other side, you, uh, sides say you need certain kinds of tiles in that row in order to flip it. You only need to complete one of those sides in order to flip that particular scoring tile. Now, you're essentially going to score one point per rows if the, 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 they are connected orthogonally and if the, one of them is touching the outside of the board. That's the only way uh, your uh, tiles for your roads are going to score. Now, your parks, they earn points if they're adjacent to factories or uh, homes, but they're worth two points if they're adjacent to a factory and a home. Factories score points if they're adjacent to roads and other factories, and if they're adjacent to a road and a factory, they score two points. 
Now, shops score a little bit differently. They score points either by being adjacent to other shops that are connected to the outside edge or to roads that are connected to the outside edge. Now, depending on where they're placed on the board, that's going to determine whether they're worth one, two, or three points. Now, homes are kind of weird, too. If they're alone, they score two points. Or if they're in any number of groups of homes, however many are connected to each other, they only ever score two points. However, if they are adjacent to a factory, they don't score any points. So at the end of the 15th round, every player goes ahead, they total up all of their points, and whoever has the most points wins! Shake that city! So this is an easy-to-learn, easy-to-play game. This is one of those games that AEG is known for. It's a got a lot of competition, a lot of great components and colors, and it's also got this fun and interesting idea where you actually have the shaker, you bring out the cubes, and then of course you have to uh, use those cubes to the best of your ability in order to create and optimize your city points. Now this is a game that will be on Kickstarter here before too long. I'll go ahead, I'll include the link to the Kickstarter once it's live in the description of this video. If this looks like something that you might be interested in, go ahead, go over to Kickstarter, check out this campaign, check out this game, and if that's something you think uh, you might be interested, you go ahead and back it. Thank you once again for joining us today on The Discriminating Gamer. As always, we ask you to please leave a comment for us on YouTube, on Board Game Geek, on our Facebook page, or on thediscriminatinggamer.com. We'd ask you to please uh, like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and follow us on Twitter. I'd also ask you to please check out my other channel, that is Cody Carlson PhD, where we talk about history, military history, books on history, fun things like that. Please check it out, please subscribe, and please give a thumb to this video on Board Game Geek. That helps us out a lot as well. You know, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to ask you, what is the tallest building in a city? The library. It has the most stories. Now I can buy. Correct. You can buy. What are you going to buy? Uh.